welcome Carrie Martin Lashney. Yay! I am so excited to meet you. Um, and I was just wondering, like, how was it when you first came in, America introduced you, saying that she brought you in to play this character, but what was the experience like for you on your side? Um, my gosh, from the start, I honestly didn't, I didn't think I could play Ana Morales because I had been in this industry for a few years with the idea of um, a stereotype that the industry wanted to put on a Latina actress. And when I walked in and I didn't have to put on a, a fake accent or anything like mm -hmm. that, I remember Marvin being like, I was like, I'm sorry, I really can't do an accent, so I'm just gonna give it to you like this. And he was like, you are enough. And those words have stayed with me for the last two years. It just really changed my, my mindset, my perspective. I, it, it, is, it is shocking to me um, how the system can work. Mm -hmm. um, I can only imagine how refreshing it was to be encouraged to be yourself. Yeah. Um, and I'm so glad that America provides mm -hmm. those types of environments and shows. That's at the core of it, I think, what is so special about this project. For us, and the whole season two takes place in, you know, Pop being released from detention to, like, the decision, right? Mm -hmm. Will he get to stay or will he be deported? And the whole season is watching this family live life that yes there's anxiety and fear and the unknown but there's also humor and joy and laughter and a horrible thanksgiving dinner because because life you know happens and yeah. because we're full complex humans we don't just sit around all day and be like who's gonna get deported today you know <laughs> yeah. like that's maybe a part of the story uh for some of us but it's not the whole story we're full humans and we're like funny and sexy and awful too I am such a romantic at heart, and one of the things that really captivated me about you beautiful women uh, was your love stories with your husbands. And I was just curious if you would tell us both about how you met them and a little bit about it, because I was so swept up in it. <laughs> I've been with my husband 16 and a half years now. And you met, like, making a student film together? He was making, he graduated from the USC film school and was making his first short film. and. Um, we met for uh, a lunch because he, um, you know, he sent me the script and everything. And I was like, oh, this is nice, but I'm tired. I'm probably not going to do this. And on the last page, there was like a press clipping. And I was like, ooh, who's that? And I was like, oh. I couldn't hurt to take a meeting. Oh. Like, it never hurts to know people. And then, and, then, and then I forgot about it. And then I showed up and we had a nine hour lunch. I love this. Thank you for indulging me. I'm living vicariously <laughs> through the beautiful romance that is not fantasy or television, it's it reality. It was real, yeah, yeah. Okay, will you tell I me about- I love that so much. <laughs> um, okay, so my husband and I met in the sixth grade Aww. and we loathed each other so much. He picked on me, I picked on him and come eighth grade, I don't know, we became really good friends. I think that hatred became um, like and then in high school, we started dating um, <laughs> against my father's will. And just fast forward, high school, college, I moved to LA. The long distance thing was not for us. So we didn't talk for about three years in that like distance. We started communicating over like Facebook. And then he started coming to visit LA. And that's one thing led to another. And we were like engaged in like less than a year. I love it. <laughs> um, really quickly, I know this isn't a really quickly question, but I just have to ask you also, you were pregnant in a pandemic. Yeah. How did you handle that? It was stressful. I was seven months pregnant when shutdowns began. And it was all, we had to change everything because I was working in LA. The plan was to come back to New York and do everything that I'd already done with my, my son. I knew where I was. I, I'm like, I did this, I got this. And then of course it's like the pandemic hit and we had to switch gears. We had to change doctors, change hospitals, change everything. But to do it without the like friends or family or help that you might normally have, it was very intense. But you know, she's 18 months old now. And like thriving. And just, delicious and she and her brother love each other and it's, oh, it's great. I mean, I 
feel like every day my goals are just about finding more joy in my life. Like we work, I mean, it's like, what did we take away from this pandemic if not that nothing is promised to us, right? I'm gonna make myself cry. <laughs> um, you know, nothing's promised to us. And I think we all need to be more gentle with ourselves, be kinder to ourselves. If you do anything today, like just be a little kinder to yourself and, and find a little window to like experience a little bit more joy every day. That's where I'm at. Thank you. Thank you for that. You guys, I am so, I've been so looking forward to this conversation. And Hentified, which is on Netflix in season two, please be sure to watch it. And thank you so much, you guys, for being here. We'll be right back. Thank you. Thank you.